Hey everybody and welcome. I think it's dead on 12 o'clock so welcome to today's webinar. My name is Rachel Staggs and I'm from SRS Coaching and Consulting. Before I go on I always like to do an audio and a sound, well a sound check. Um, so if you can just type in your box that you can hear me and that you can see my screen that would be fantastic otherwise um, I'm talking to myself. So if you can just type in there that you can see and hear me then we can start today's webinar. Excellent, thanks James, brilliant, thank you. All okay, are oh, you great? Now I can see some people that I know very well on here, um, thank you. Um, I can see Harold, hello Harold, hello, how are you? And Anthony and Mark, and there's a few people that I don't know as well. So thank you for, first of all, taking up your time to come to this webinar. And I think we, we always try and do it at a lunchtime because it's a nice idea that you're sitting down and having your sandwich. Perhaps you're having your, your, your lunch and your coffee right now. And just know that this webinar is being recorded because it will be uploaded to the Advisor Leader Forum website as well. Curious to know, guys, because um, you are all on mute. So just to, you know, everybody will be on mute for the rest of the webinar. But curious to know, I am a marketing person, how did you hear about today's webinar? Can you let me know? Was it via direct email, perhaps, that you got? Or was it via some of the social media channels that we've used? If I can just get you while a few more people are, are logging in, just to let me know. Thanks, Mark. So we've got a few people on LinkedIn. And it's interesting with LinkedIn, we're just sort of having a, a conversation between all of us, you know, how powerful is LinkedIn? So, uh, so we've got lots of people, LinkedIn, Twitter, direct email, direct email, LinkedIn, okay, excellent, good, direct email, social media, leaders forum, excellent, thanks Des, brilliant. Well, let's jump on with, with, the, with, with the webinar. This is my massive promise, thanks Tim, this is my massive promise to you today, because I do, I went to a, a, a conference, I'll just share a story with you, I went to a conference the other day and they were talking about in this year, it was a thought leaders conference, just to put some context around it. And this year, what word, what one word would you own? And immediately I came out with, you know, if I had to own a word, my word would be practicality. Because at the end of the day, that's what I'm all about. Everything, I'm a qualified marketing person. Advisors are the only people I work with, so people just like yourself. But at the end of the day, whatever I'm going to deliver to you, I've got to make sure that A, I know it works, so everything I share with you does work, and B, you can go and do it in your business the next day. So that's exactly what I'm going to share with you today, stuff that you can go away. Some of it you might be using already. Um, some of it you may have had on the back burner to use, so this might be a bit of a prompt to, to get it to implement into your business. And some of the ideas you may never have heard of before but at the end of the day if you take one to three ideas then that is absolutely fantastic so I can still see we've still got some people joining so they've just missed that intro brilliant intro but that's okay so that's the big promise for today so I trust that you've all got your pens and your pads to take lots of notes because I do talk quickly but I'll try and slow down for you so the first thing I want to answer is where does all this content that I'm a bit for, thank you, Susan. Um, where does all this content that I'm just about to talk to you, where does it come from? And I wanna be really fair to you and say that it comes from the Advisor Marketing Program. So this particular content comes from the third module, I think, or second module, actually. Second module, which is all about building a um, sustainable referral-based business. So in that particular module, I talk about how to ask your existing clients for more referrals, but we do it in a really nice, natural way and set up a referral process. And then we talk about the flip side. Well, how do you actually form, how do you find and then form strategic alliances? And then the last part is how do you leverage those? So that's this is where this content has come from today, just to let you know. And I'm going to make some assumptions with all of you today that you have strategic alliances in place. Is there anybody that perhaps doesn't have any strategic alliances in place just yet? Or do most of you have some kind of relationship with some referral partners? Have relationships, excellent, thank you, John. That's great, brilliant. So most, okay, good. 
So if, a couple of you. Okay, okay. Yeah, everybody wants more. And look, if you don't have any, perhaps the advisor marketing program would be a good program for you to undertake. I'll talk about that in the end, but let's get on. Okay, let's share some research first because I think this is really interesting and I get really passionate about this. As you know, we at the um, Advice Leaders Forum, we conducted some major research at the sort of the first quarter of this year. And I wasn't surprised to see, I must be honest, I wasn't surprised to see that 89% of you said that you want to understand how to gain endless referrals from business partners and clients. And it's interesting, this year I spent a lot of time on the road going to talk to advisors all around Australia, people just like yourselves, you know, people who are categorised as the top 20 for certain licensees. And every time I talk to them, they always want to know how do we gain the right type of referrals from our referral partners. So even though you've worked hard to set up these relationships, I think, you know, maybe, well, you can see that 11% don't want to get any more referrals. The majority of you absolutely do. And when I'm talking to business development managers, they'll say, oh, no, you know, our board of advisors is fine. Our panel of advisors is fine. They don't need any more referrals. But I think you do. Am I, am I speaking the truth? Do, do you want more referrals? Is that what you're looking for? 89% of you say yes. So I trust that those of you today also want them too. Excellent. Thank you. That's great. Good. Good to get interaction. I don't like to think that I'm talking to myself. So thank you very much. So this is not, I'm going to warn you now, this is not death by PowerPoint. I don't have a trillion slides to share with you. So the next slide is me revealing the nine the nine things, and we're going to go through them step by step. So stay with me, and I'll go through each point step by step. So grab your pen. So the first one is meet the salesperson. Oh, someone doesn't have any sound. Does everybody else have sound? Just checking in. I haven't had any alerts to say that people don't have sound. Can I just get someone to say, yep, okay, sorry, it was just that one person. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So it's just that one person. Brilliant. Okay. All right, let's get on. So the first one is meet the salespeople. And I know that this could potentially sound obvious, but I worked with a business a couple of years ago um, in the city here. You might, have, you might have seen it in the newsletter that I shared last month. And it was a fairly large um, advice business in the sense that they had four advisors. So there's two business partners and four advisors. And the business partners had formed a great relationship that they thought with an accountancy practice here in the, in the city. And the relationship, all the strategic work had been done by the business owners. The business owner of the accountancy firm then went off and had um, sort of three months overseas, a well-deserved break. But what happened in those three months that while he was away was nothing. No referrals were coming through from the accountancy business. And the advice business was a bit perplexed. You know, it all been very exciting. They'd set up, you know, the process, all the the noughts and crosses had been covered. So when the um, owner of the accountancy practice came back um, back to Australia, you know, the, the partners sat down and said, look, you know, this, this isn't working. We're not really quite sure why. And then it was revealed that the people who actually see the, the clients, the accountants who actually see the clients, had no idea about this relationship. So I don't want this one to, I don't want anyone to think, well, that's pretty obvious because I don't think it is obvious. And the more I'm out there talking to advisors, the more I see the light bulb go on when we talk about this. So make sure that you know who it is that is actually seeing the clients and build the relationship with them. The second one, which is a golden oldie, golden oldie work from their office. And every time I mention this one, people go, yeah, I know, I know. It's on my list of things to do. I just haven't done it yet. Again, I could tell you so many stories of advisors who go and do this. And by this, I'm suggesting that if you've got a formal relationship with, we say one accountant, so obviously it's gonna be different for all of you, but if you've got a relationship with an accountant or a mortgage broker, or whoever it may be, there's no reason why you couldn't actually go and sit in their office every Friday. Does anybody do this, this strategy? Can I just get a bit of feedback. Does anybody do this type of thing? Because it's absolute gold. Anybody do this? Nobody's saying anything. 
anybody sit and work every week from their referral partner's office. It's so easy to do. No, none of you. No, 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 no. You're all coming back with no's. No, no. How would you make this happen? Just about to answer it. Great, used to. Please, please revisit. So how would you do it? So you've obviously got to talk to them. Um, you've always got to talk to them and say, look, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to come and spend some time in your office. It's a really good idea. I've heard from others. Um, Oh, okay, so Paul works in an office. Okay, brilliant. Sorry, guys, I was just looking at the comments. Um, so what you would do, you would um, approach that strategic partner and say, hey, look, I've heard that, you know, it can work really well if um, if I come and actually sit in your office every week. I'm curious to know, do you, would you have a desk? I don't need a permanent desk. It'd be a floating desk, but just somewhere I can come and sit every week, perhaps every Friday. And, you know, Friday is always a kind of a, a casual day. Monday is a bit scary, um, but I think Fridays is because is it's more casual. It works really well. So you go and sit in their office, you obviously take all your work and you sit and do your work there. Just the fact, you know, it's all about relationships, isn't it? It's all, all about that, that, that referral partner forming that relationship with you, getting to understand what it is that you actually do. And I'll tell you a story of an advisor who did this about three years ago. I mean, this, people do it all the time, but this is a great example. An advisor did this uh, three years ago and he went and sat in the accountancy practice again here in the city and he did it for six months. And for six months, he just formed great relationships with all of the accountants. You know, it was really great. He rocked up every Friday and some Fridays he took donuts and they all had coffee and, and he was forming relationships. The last six months of that year, he pretty much did all of their work. So all of them became clients of theirs. It's just naturally what's going to happen when you start talking about what it is that you do. Now it's his biggest referral source because all of those accountants send work to him all the time. Now, he doesn't sit in their office every week anymore, unfortunately. He's just too busy, but he does every month. So I hope that gives you an idea of how it can work. I've got a, an advisor I'm working with at the moment, and he's taken this strategy on board, and he's sitting in the mortgage broker's office. And it's absolute gold. Just the fact that you're there, you know, you're for, it's like the old-fashioned stuff. You're forming that relationship. All of a sudden, they can see what it is that you actually do. All of a sudden... They've got a client there and then on that Friday. You just happen to be there. It's a great way to make the introduction. So for those of you that said you used to do it, it's absolute gold, guys. In this digital world, in this new world, these basics sometimes still work. The next one I know is pretty obvious as well, a nice pretty pink one, meet monthly. The amount of advisors that I hear that don't meet monthly, it's really interesting. It's really that old-fashioned communication, isn't it? It's that corporate professional approach when we meet monthly um you're going to have to have an agenda it's not you know for some of you it might just be a casual coffee for, for other advisors it's more of a formal process but it is something where you would have an agenda and very loosely on that agenda you're going to refer to what we call the service level agreement and i'll go through that in just a moment but if you used to meet monthly and it's gone a bit off the rails, I would really encourage you to do that because you get the opportunity to continue to build that relationship and they get the opportunity to talk about, you know, the more we talk, the more we open opportunities. I was talking to a client of mine on the other side of Australia yesterday and just because we're talking, we're uncovering great marketing opportunities. You don't have to meet face to face. You can do it via Skype. You can do it on the phone. But the message here is, the more regular our communication, the more we can leverage and the more successful you're going to be. Now, the next one is what we call an SLA, and this is a service level agreement. And I just want to get some feedback from you. I know that some licensees do provide service level agreements. Is anybody unsure of what I'm talking about when I say an SLA, a service level agreement? It's a brilliant document that you just create between the partnerships. And again, I'm making assumptions that you've got strategic alliances in place. Some of you will, you know, there'll be skin in the game and, and some of you there won't. Okay, let me, okay, brilliant, thank you. Let me talk about what a service level agreement is. Firstly, I think one of the things that happens with these referral relationships is it's all gung-ho and really energetic and positive at the very beginning. And as life goes on, it sometimes loses that fizz. It loses that great emotion and enthusiasm you, you had. And then you know that you've got to go and meet with that referral partner, but the confrontation kind of is awkward. You don't like it. You feel uncomfortable. And I acknowledge that. You know, we don't like confrontation usually. So when we have a document to talk to, 
it removes all of that emotion. And that's exactly what a service level agreement does, the SLA, it's exactly what it does. And in that SLA, it's nothing too you know, over the top. The SLA, well, it can be as complex as you want it to be. I think when things are simple, they get done. When they're complex, we get overwhelmed and we don't do anything. So an SLA is a basic document that's going to outline exactly what you both agree on. And the type of things I'm suggesting here is how often you're going to meet, how often you're going to refer, how many you're going to refer. So you're being really specific here. Um, the types of clients that they're going to refer and you're going to refer, the types of services that um, you're going to offer each other's clients, um, but, um, how often, no, sorry, um, by when you're going to call back. So if someone refers someone to you, you're going to call back within the next 24 hours. All that nitty gritty detail, because what you do is every time you meet on a monthly basis, you've got a document that you can walk through. So if you find that you're not getting the right type of clients referred by a referral partner, you can refer to that document and say, hey, remember when we talked about this, these are the type of clients I'm, I'm really looking for. I'm noticing that what's coming through isn't quite hitting the mark. And so you've got that document to talk to. When you actually state, look, you know, let's, let's agree, I'm just going to pull a figure out the hat, three client referrals every month. If that's not happening, again, you have a document to talk to, to say, look, you know, the agreement was three a month, you know, the last six months I haven't seen anything. It's just, it removes that emotion. Is that something that would be of value? I know that from other advisors, they absolutely love that type of tool that would be valuable. Give me some feedback, guys. Do you think that could be a valuable tool for you to use with your, with your referral partners? It's a nice, simple tool. Yep, nice, great, good. Absolutely, definitely, yes, positively, yes, absolutely, good. I'm glad to hear that it's good. Okay. Targeted email campaigns. Again, all this comes from stories. Um, excellent. Nice to hear, Harold. Yeah, it pushes you to think laterally too, Susan. Absolutely. It does make and it makes you think. It absolutely. Makes you accountable too. I'm a bit as a qualified business coach, I'm very much into accountability. Targeted email campaigns. And again, this is talking from experience. I think when, you know, when we form these relationships with referral partners, the expectation is quite huge. You know, the expectation is that um, lots of referrals will come our way. But if you think about it, the accountant or whoever it is, I'm just saying accountant just to be vanilla, you know, the accountant can't possibly get in front of all his clients in the first month, three months, or possibly even a year to talk about what it is that you do. So what's worked really well with clients that have worked with in the past and working with now is when we do targeted email campaigns. So this is only going to be as good as the email data that the referral partner has. But basically what you do is you develop, you know, you use MailChimp or one of those great platforms out there, email marketing platforms, and you create campaigns, you know, one a month. And you might have one thing you talk about or three things you talk about. So it might be estate planning. It might be you know, risk, it might be, you know, wealth accumulation, whatever is in your bag, and you develop a campaign and you ask the accountant to send that to all of his um, database. You must have a great call to action on that campaign, but it is a brilliant way for the accountant to get your message through to their database, because we can't expect that they can do that in, you know, in a certain amount of period of time. So there's no reason why we can't think from a marketing perspective, well, let's, cre let's create some marketing messages. And it's always great when you're doing those types of targeted campaigns, just to give you a bit of thought for, you know, food for thought here, is for example, if you're gonna do, I'm just gonna say estate planning, it came to my head, I'm not quite sure why. If you're gonna do an estate planning campaign, you talk about what estate planning is, but you have a case study, you have some kind of example, some kind of story that people can get their head around, and then you're going to have a great call to action. And that call to action might be to go to the accountant and they're going to come to you, but I would probably recommend that they come straight to you. So lots of ideas in terms of targeted email campaigns. Works absolutely brilliantly. Co-newsletters, again, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to assume that you're doing monthly communications to your clients. I trust you are. If you aren't, please do the advisor marketing program. I'll teach you how to do that. 
But monthly communications, if you've got an accountant who's sending out a newsletter, there's no reason why you can't do an article in that newsletter. Conversely, there's no reason why the accountant can't do an article in your newsletter either. Um, if, you're, if they're not doing a newsletter, why wouldn't you suggest, hey, every month, why don't we put together a monthly newsletter? And again, if you want more information on what to put in that newsletter, do the advisor marketing course um, because it will teach you how to do that. But again, there's no reason why we can't do combined communication. Share web presence. Um, this is a very powerful one. They've got a website. You've got a website. If you form some kind of strategic alliance, there's no reason why that can't be mentioned on each other's websites. So they might say, they might make, they might make an announcement and they might do a video um, introducing you. That would be absolutely gold. You know, it's the two of you being interviewed um, on why the partnership has come together. What's the value for the client? What's going to be, at, you know, what's going to be the outcome from the client? And conversely, have them on your website as well to say, hey, look, I'm really excited. We've formed a, um, a partnership with X, Y and Z because we, we, we identify that you are valued clients could really um, well, I'm just going ad lib here, could really benefit from the services, da, 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 da. So is anybody doing that type of thing at the moment? Is anybody sharing any kind of social media or digital platform with their referral partners right now? There's no reason why you couldn't have a Facebook page together. Now, again, different businesses, you know, it's not going to work for everybody. So we've got no, no, yep, that's great. Not yet. Good. I like that. Not yet. Because that presupposes that you're going to. That's brilliant. But again, there's no reason your Facebook page. If any of you got Facebook pages, have you liked your accountant's Facebook page? Are you, are you cross-referencing each other's posts? There's no reason why you can't do that. That's just another example there. So just checking in, have we got some gold nuggets so far in terms of how you can, because it's all about communication, isn't it? It's all about relevance and it's about staying top of mind. I remember many, many, too many years ago now when I worked at um, a bank and we were constantly in the, the poor um, teller's faces saying, you know, flog this product, flog that product, da, da, da. And at the end of the day, you've got to feel sorry for them because they can't remember everything. But you kind of get the magic that the more you communicate, the more you package it up in a really easy and efficient way, the more it's remembered. And then thanks, Sue. And the more it's remembered, the more it's implemented. Excellent. So don't forget digital and don't forget um, social media as well. Now, one of the last ones is processes and systems. And again, I kind of think this is an obvious one, but it's really important when you're looking at systems to ask yourself, how can that integrate with my referral partners? And I think the reporting mechanism is what they love. And especially if we're just going to talk about accountants, but probably mortgage brokers too. And I wonder if any of you can share, you know, do you have any rigorous reporting systems developed that you're using that in that monthly meeting that you have, you're sharing with your referral partners? So I'm just going to open that up and ask if anybody's doing that at the moment. Any kind of reporting that you do or are you just kind of leaving it? And I think there's a lot of loose relationships for some reason with, with, with this. Des, you're going to get a star today. <laughs> Excellent. Started doing informal. Yeah. Okay. APS. Yeah. Anybody else? Because, again, the reporting will dem further demonstrate how critical you are to that relationship. <laughs> Thanks, dear. How critical you are to that relationship. And Harold said, monthly reporting on client updates, however, process has broken down my end. Okay, good admission there. And I think sometimes, you know, none of this, I don't think any of this is, is really new. Some of it may be, ref, you know, a refresher for you. But that's why I call it a nine-step process, because if you're covering off all of that, I think you can sit back with your arms folded and go, do you know what? I'm doing everything I possibly can to make this relationship work. Now, the ninth thing, the golden egg is the partnership. And the partnership really comes back to how was it set up originally? And I'm very interested when I hear about how these relationships are formed out there in the industry. Some are very rigorous and some are very loose. And I think the ones that are the rigorous ones are the ones that add value to the practice. And it's not really my boots that should talk about this. It's really um, 
the guys at Seaview and also um, Tony McDonald, who are part of the Advice Leaders Forum. And they will give you some excellent webinars in terms of how to make that partnership um, work really, really effectively. I'm coming from it, from um, the marketing perspective, because that's the hat that I wear, that hat that I wear. But in terms of this particular webinar, if you're meeting the salespeople and you're getting that relationship going, if you're working from their office, if you're meeting monthly, if you've actually got a document set up to say what it is that you're actually going to do, if you're going to do some awesome targeted email campaigns, that's absolutely gold. No reason why you can't do a monthly newsletter. Share the web presence, get on social media together. You might even form a LinkedIn group. And again, it depends on who the clients are. If they're very business focused, why wouldn't you, for what purpose would you not form a LinkedIn group, you know, co-chair with your referral partner, make sure your processes and systems uh, are in place and the partnership is actually gold. So there are the nine steps that I wanted to share with you today. All of them absolutely doable, um, I think, from your end. None of them kind of going to cost a fortune either. I'm not in the job of breaking the bank. So just wanted to talk very quickly now about the August intake because I'm not running the advisor marketing program in July. I will be running it in August. I can't say when else I'm going to be running it this year. I probably won't be in September and October. So if you do want to learn more about how to attract, convert and retain clients, I would strongly recommend you do the program. It's really, I've been doing it now for, for a few years. It's We do it via a virtual uh, platform so you don't have to get up out of your seats. It takes four weeks. It's one hour every week. The modules that we cover, you can see on the screen. So the first one is your business foundation. So it's really teaching you how to set up the, the trust and the credibility. The second one, some of this was taken from, so building a sustain, sustainable referral-based business. Week three is always exciting. So we talk about how to use websites and social media to attract and retain your clients. And the fourth one is absolute gold because we talk about demonstrating your value for the lifetime of a client. So if that is something that you're interested in checking out, please do. I only take about um, 10 to 12 people per class because that way we all get to know each other and we can have a chat. So please have a look at that. The Advice Leaders Forum, obviously this is what we are also part of as well. This will be recorded, is being recorded and will be uploaded, but please make sure that you, you familiarize yourself with the site because there'll be lots of great content around HR, recruitment, leadership issues, um, valuations, business succession, um, strategic marketing, web design, lots of great stuff. So guys, I think that is my 30 minutes of power. I trust that you've enjoyed, I trust you've got some nuggets out of it. Have you all got, have you all got what, at least one actionable item that you can do? And this is where you say what your actionable item is going to be. Yep, yeah, great. Please feel free to share. Yeah, excellent. Great, Cameron, I trust you've got some as well. Great, yeah, meeting a mortgage broker, brilliant. Formalizing, great, create, brilliant. Go and get it done because it's all stuff that's really going to help you guys. So, you know, I, I appreciate you coming along. It's your half an hour, it's your time. If you've got any questions, um, all you've got to do is email me, check out my website, call me. Follow me on Twitter, all that great stuff. So go and have some lunch now. <laughs> yes, draw up the SLA and email program. Yeah, please do that and formalize lines of reporting. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. You've been excellent. Um, it's only half an hour. I trust you've got some value. I know you have. Go and have a brilliant afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. You're welcome, Susan. Thank you.